You know, this week is National Suicide Prevention Week, and today we are taking a closer look at an alarming trend affecting people in the vet veterinary profession. A new study by the Centers for Disease Control found that nearly 400 veterinarians died by suicide. That's between 1979 and 2015. And female vets are up to three and a half times more likely to kill themselves than members of the general population. Well, tonight, News 5's Olivia Fecto shows us how those in the field are dealing with the stresses they face. You're a good girl. Veterinarian Katie McCoy has been working in her field for more than a decade. She's one of the owners at Tremont Animal Clinic. It's an amazing job. Um, the great parts are taking care of puppies and kittens and meeting clients that become like lifelong friends to you. But she knows all too well the stresses faced by those in her profession, from long hours and isolation to crushing student loan debt, and of course, dealing with sick or injured animals. That's probably the hardest part for us is wanting to help that animal and save that animal and doing everything that we can, um, but sometimes financially um, or other reasons, it's just not an option. That's sometimes referred to as compassion fatigue and it affects many in the veterinary field. A study that tracked more than 11,000 veterinarians who died between 1979 and 2015 found 398 of them died by suicide. For men, that suicide rate was more than double the general population. For women, three and a half times the general population. The 23rd day after I became dean, we lost a student to suicide. Rustin Moore is the dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine at The Ohio State University. He's lost several colleagues and friends to suicide. That's had an impact on how the college handles mental health. We have two full-time social work licensed professionals here on site. Um, that's in addition to what the university provides through their mental health and health and wellness services. Plus an on-site psychiatrist available at no cost and a financial advisor to help students manage their debt. And if we aren't welcome to talk, we're not doing what we should be doing for, for, for our students and the profession. On top of many other stressors, social media can add to the burden. Something happens um, that wasn't a veterinarian's fault and um, they're blasted on social media, they're given a bad review, and then a bunch of people who've never been to that clinic or know that veterinarian or that business, um, jump on board. But social media can be positive too. Facebook groups like Not One More Vet give those in the field a place to talk. I think it stopped a lot of suicides. I think a lot of people have reached out and thousands of people have responded and stepped up. For McCoy, bad days are tempered by better ones. A client sends flowers or a card or a dog comes in that I've been working on for months and I found out what was wrong with it and I treated it and the dog's doing awesome and the owner's so happy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Days that remind her why she does this. The bad days are just bad days and you gotta get through them. Olivia Fecto, News 5.